Hey there. Um, I'll probably be interrupted here uh, real quick for a because uh, I got I ordered some food. I'm gonna drive through, so I had to pay for it. But um, I don't have a lot of time to do a video. Uh, I did a really long video today, and you may not have time to watch that. But I just wanted to briefly summarize that Brother Dave presented a incoherent mix uh, of law and grace, which is the typical. I'm not really blaming it on him, but it's the typical teaching of Christianity that people have embraced. And I really hope that people get into the message that I gave uh, and break it down to see that this is an incoherent mix of law and grace uh, because it presents, on the one hand, that you are an heir of eternal life, but it's not as an heir, but it, it says that you have eternal life through justification, but that you work for rewards as a wage and that the wage is uncertain uh which is just you know so what you can know is that you have eternal life but regarding the wage that you're working for which is called the reward in this system uh it's uncertain and the reason it's incoherent is because you don't know it's on the one hand you've been brought into the father's house and you're a son and an heir but on the other hand you've been told to go out to the field and work as a slave and on the one hand you've been told you've been given an inheritance but on the other hand you've been told that you have to go work for a wage and on the other hand one hand you've been told that you've been you're going to get a wage for your work but you're uncertain as to whether or not you will actually receive the wage and how much it'll be or what the wage is for uh, in this system that they've presented that that's, that's pretty formal I mean they you know this is their official teaching in Christianity these days is that there's no way to really even know what is the wage for and how do I know I'm gonna get it and how do I know I'm qualified uh, and so they even say that you know you work for the wage but the reward, which is the wage, is uncertain. So eternal life is certain, but the wage is not. And even in the Gospels, when Jesus talked about the wage, it was agreed that you worked for a certain specified amount. No one would go work for a master who's not going to tell him how much he's going to get paid. So it's incoherent, meaning, the, and that's Schofield's term, was that the Galatian error is an incoherent mix of law and grace where it's just a mess, it's just a confusing mess. You have no idea where you stand in that system. And that's why it produces fear and condemnation for those who are honest and is used to abuse sheep by people who use it dishonestly for gain. And the gain they get is they gain a status among Christians uh, who they they beat with the systems. So in other words, they rise to the top and using that system and then beat everybody with it into submission. Uh, it's a system of, of abuse. It's an abuse of the word and it's abuse of people's conscience based on a misinterpretation, uh, not a misinterpretation, a twisting of the word justification that allows them to rob you of your you crown. Cheeseburger half meal, yes. four nuggets. Yeah. Uh, rob you of your crown, rob you of your assurance, and leave you outside working for a wage rather than bring you into the house and stand you, thank you, uh, as a son and an heir in the father's house. And again, it all comes down from not rightly dividing the word and not knowing the difference between law and gospel and putting people under a mix of law and grace because you think that people are going to be motivated by the carrot and the stick when that's not how we are motivated in the New Testament after the resurrection of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, after the resurrection of Christ, we have a ministry called a betrothing ministry. I betrothed you as a virgin to Christ, who's our bridegroom. And the betrothing ministry is like, a, is like Abraham sent his servant Eliezer, which means comforter, uh, who's a type of the Holy Spirit, to go find a bride for Isaac, who's a type of Christ. And Rebecca represents uh, the church in that story. And Eliezer gives her gold earrings, or silver earrings and a golden necklace, or something like that, the, the gold and the silver as tokens 
of the riches of the house she's going to, and then proceeds to lead her on a journey to Isaac, who she's never seen. But he gives her gifts along the way that are gestures of Isaac's kindness and the goodness of the house she's going to, so that when she finally sees Isaac, she and he's telling her all along how good oh man Abraham's house it's great and he's rich and he's generous and Isaac you're gonna love him he's so sweet and he's gonna love you and he's gonna shower you with blessings and he's gonna be so good to you and here's another gift he gave her gifts along the way to as tokens gestures to show her the goodness of the one she's being betrothed to and that is a type of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the gifts of the Spirit who were given the evangelist, shepherd, apostle, prophet, teacher, by the resurrected Christ, who is our bridegroom, he gave the gifts, the gifted ones, to the body of Christ as gifts to betroth the saints to Christ by sharing the goodness of her Isaac with her so that when she sees him, she doesn't shrink back in fear because she thinks he's a hard taskmaster, but she runs to him because she's been told about how good he is. And that is the motivation in the Christian life, not carrots and sticks and you're going to go out and work for a wage and the way you become a holy son of God is to, it, you know, the, the reason Brother Dave shares a chart like that is because he believes that if you're not told about punishments and rewards, you won't work for God. You'll be apathetic and lazy. And it's because he doesn't understand the betrothing ministry in the New Testament. And, and the way we are ministering is not by compelling people to work and scaring them if they don't and tell them to go out to the field to be a slave, to work for a wage, which is uncertain. No, we tell them, look, you are being carried by the Holy Spirit on a camel. You're not walking there yourself. You're being carried to your bridegroom, and he's giving you gifts along the way, and the journey is one of telling you about the goodness of your Isaac. That is the ministry, and that ministry is for you to grow in the knowledge of your Isaac so that when you see him, you're full of love for him. And that ministry is the washing of the water of the word that sanctifies you and purifies you. And it gives you gifts. And those gifts are what causes you to serve the bride. Not only do you become the bride, but you also serve. And your service is not to compel and scare the other members of the bride into working for a wage that is uncertain, but to tell them about what has already been secured for them. They've already been betrothed. She's already on the way to the father's house. She's already reckoned with Isaac as a sharer and everything that he has. And the gifts that she's been given are tokens guaranteeing that that is her destination and that's what she has. Just like for us, the Holy Spirit was given as a pledge uh, guaranteeing the inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We already have the inheritance. We're already sons and heirs, and the inheritance is the reward. Justification secured the blessing, which is the Spirit, and the Spirit is the pledge guaranteeing the inheritance, which is the reward. Okay? We are all, we have everything. We're not God isn't withholding something from us and making us work for it. That's not how it works for sons and heirs. They're not slaves in the field. They're brought into the house for the feast. And then in the house, they also can become stewards because they get invested in the household and have a desire uh, of love to share in the father's business and the enterprise. And the they see the goodness of uh, you know, the firstborn son and what he's involved with and they participate. But it's entirely out of love and it's all free will. It, that's why it's all grace. It's not of debt. It's of, not of works. It is not I, but the grace of God in me. And if it's not of grace, it's wood, hay, and stubble. And those who suffer loss will do so because they thought to earn a wage. They mixed the wage system in. And they were serving their appetites, not 
serving Christ out of love. So um, this is a short version to recommend that you really get into that video. Uh, please spend some time because um, I take apart that chart that he posted and just show how incoherent and what nonsense it is and how that is the exact example of Galatian error that I've been trying to uh, address. He, it's like he posted a perfect example of the patronizing, condescending, and abusive way that the pastoral system, uh, the Balaamite hirelings who work for a wage but pretend to be prophets of God but are actually enemies of the sheep, uh, who are after your crown, have abused the sheep and taken away their assurance and brought them into confusion so they don't know where they stand before God by bringing them under an incoherent mix of law and grace by separating the uh, justification from the inheritance and the reward and making you work for what God has already secured for you in the grace of Christ and given to you as a free gift. Uh, all right, well, um, have a happy Mother's Day. And, you know, I know that's an hour uh, hour and 40 minute teaching, so I just wanted to follow it up and say, please watch it. So this is my recommendation to watch that hour and a half teaching. Thanks.